either deciding to run for office themselves or really focused on supporting women running for office. We know that when we have more voices at the table, uh, we bring more perspectives to the table and we build solutions and move our states and our country forward in ways that really include everybody. And that makes for communities and an economy where we're all thriving. Looking into your crystal ball, how important do you think participation of women will be in these midterms? I think it's very, very important. Uh, what we are seeing right now from the Republican majority and from this president is a real focus on serving corporate special interests at the expense of really hardworking families. And I think wherever I go and I talk to families, they're telling me that Increasingly, the basics of a middle class life are out of reach. Child care, college tuition, home ownership, health care. And what they really want us to be focusing on are those things. How can we make sure that people who are working hard can afford these basics so that they can build a better lives for themselves and their families and really build a better future for their kids? And women have a real focus on those issues. Um, and we really also know how important it is that we stand up as Democrats in these midterms to really say to this majority, uh, you either need to come together with us and work on these issues, which they haven't been willing to do in any significant way, uh, or we need new leadership, and women are really standing up to be that new leadership and bring this perspective to the table. What have been some of the obstacles that have kept women from this role in the past? Well, I think some of it is just um, expectations. We know that once women start running for office and once voters get used to them running, uh, they do very well. But people need role models, and there haven't been a lot of role models for women. I'm happy to say that in New Hampshire, uh, I am the second woman to have served as uh, governor and uh, the second woman to be elected both governor and senator. And so we know that uh, when girls and young women have role models, it makes a difference, and that's what we need uh, right now. We also need voices that will, and representatives, who will focus on the needs of the people in their communities. Um, in the past, it's been hard for women uh, because there haven't been role models. Uh, sometimes it's been hard for women, too, because uh, they don't have networks that um, are easy to tap for fundraising, mm -hmm. but I think what we're seeing now is women are overcoming a lot of those challenges and stepping up, and you can see voters responding to them really positively. Is there part of it that goes beyond being aspirational, being a role model, and actually showing a candidate a blueprint of this is how I got into statewide office? Sure. I mean, a, a lot of it is about the nuts and bolts. A lot of it is helping women overcome their own concerns about the harshness of political campaigns and understanding that they can weather that and you know one of the things I try to let women know is that running for office and serving in office is a great joy. It can be enormously interesting, challenging, but you're getting a chance to serve the people of your district and of your state and of this country. And uh, when you really when you really focus on that and when you really work with your constituents and see the progress you can make and the challenges you can solve, it, it's an unbelievable honor and privilege to be able to do it.